During a 200-year period of Japan's self-imposed isolation from the rest of the world through its chained country policy, the rest of the world was making steady moves towards a new age. Progress in science and technology made it possible for the peoples and countries of the world to interact with each other in an unprecedented manner. After the 18th century especially, there was a rush of inventions and discoveries the battery, 1800, gas light, 1800, steam engine train, 1804, power generator, 1831, the telegraph, 1844, and the list goes on. But these were just beginnings. The very first telegraph was sent by Morse on May 24th, 1844. It read, What hath God wrought? Around this time, according to the divine plan, a new revelation was in progress. The day before Moore sent the first telegraph, the Bob had declared his sacred mission to Mullah Hussein. I am, I am, I am the promised one. I am the one whose name you have for a thousand years invoked, at whose mention you have risen, whose advent you have longed to witness and the hour of whose revelation you have prayed God to hasten. Verily, I say it is incumbent upon the peoples of both the East and the West to obey my word and to pledge allegiance to my person. In 1852, eight years after the Bob's declaration, during the incarceration in the dark dungeon of the Siachal, Baha'u'llah received the first intimations of the Divine Revelation. The following year in July 1853, U.S. Commodore Matthew Perry came to Uraga near Yokohama with his fleet of black ships, demanding Japan to open its door to the rest of the world. While Japan was in great turmoil about whether to open its door to the outside world, Baha'u'llah publicly declared his mission during a 12-day stay, April 21st to May 2nd, 1863, in the Garden of Rizwan in Baghdad. The divine springtime has come, O most exalted pen, for the festival of the All-Merciful is fast approaching. Bestir yourselves, O people, in anticipation of the days of divine justice, for the promised hour is now come. Beware lest ye fail to apprehend its import and be accounted among the erring. Baha'u'llah ascended on May 29, 1892. At the time, followers of his faith existed in the Ottoman Empire, Palestine, Turkey, Iraq, Iran, India, and China. In his will, Baha'u'llah directed that the followers of his faith should turn toward his eldest son, Abdu'l-Baha, as the center of his covenant. In 1868, the Meiji Restoration began, and Japan started to tread its path towards modernization and democratization. It was on September 23, 1893, that the first mention of the Baha'i Faith was made on the American continent. It was at the First World Parliament of Religions in Chicago. In the same year, 1893, Ibrahim Kerula began teaching the faith in Chicago, and in the following year, 1894, Thornton Chase accepted the faith and became the first American Baha'i. In 1898, a renowned philanthropist, Phoebe Hurst, accepted the faith and in the same year undertook a pilgrimage to the Holy Land with a company including Lua Gestinger. On their way to Haifa in 1898, Hurst met May Bowles, later to be Maxwell, whom Phoebe had already known in America, 
and who was sick in bed at this time. Hurst urged May to go to the Holy Land with a group, and she subsequently accepted the faith. Upon her return from the Holy Land, May Bowles began teaching the faith in Europe. During this time, she met Agnes Alexander, who was visiting Europe from Hawaii and accepted the Baha'i faith in 1900 in Italy. Surprisingly, the time gap between the birth of the earliest American Baha'is and the appearance of the first Japanese Baha'is is a mere 10 years or so. This is because the first three Japanese Baha'is were all living either in Hawaii or on the mainland America at the time. Mr. Kanichi Yamamoto was originally from Yamaguchi. As a young man, he decided to move to America and first settled in Hawaii. He worked for Mr. and Mrs. William Smith in Honolulu, whose son Clarence had become a Baha'i through Agnes Alexander. Also living with the family was Elizabeth Muther, an early Baha'i of Hawaii. Mr. Yamamoto was raised as a Buddhist, but later became a Christian. However, upon hearing about the Baha'i teachings, he immediately accepted the faith as truth. It was in 1902 when he was 23 years old. Mr. Saichiro Fujita was from Yanai, Yamaguchi, and left Japan in 1903 for San Francisco. He was 17 years old. He later moved to Oakland, and there he met Mrs. Catherine Franklin and accepted the faith in 1905. After finishing high school in Oakland, California, Mr. Fujita went to Cleveland, Ohio to attend university. But in 1912, Abdu'l-Bahá came to the United States. Mr. Fujita went to Chicago to see him. Abdu'l-Bahá warmly greeted him with the words, My Japanese, you follow me. So Mr. Fujita accompanied him to California. Abdu'l-Bahá suggested that Mr. Fujita first finish his studies and then come to the Holy Land to serve the faith. He also said that Fujita should study electrical engineering and horticulture. Later, Fujita would work on electrical wiring of the Baha'i properties and gardening in the Holy Land. Also, he had a used Ford sent to the Holy Land, which he drove and acted as Abdul Baha's chauffeur. Mr. Fujita was to spend about 40 years in the Holy Land for service to the cause, except for the 17 years 1938 to 1955, when he was sent back to Japan because of the war. The third Japanese Baha'i, Mr. Kenzo Torikai, embraced the faith in Seattle through Charlotte Gillen. Mr. Torikai visited Japan in 1916-1917 and wrote the first original teaching pamphlet in Japanese titled A New World Civilization. Part of this was translated into Braille by Mr. Torti, president of Japanese Association for the Blind. The pamphlet was used as a textbook for a Braille class. Mr. Tordikai also did travel teaching from Tohoku to Kyushu, wearing a piece of cloth tied around his head, which read, Unity of Humankind. During the trip, he would spread a banner titled, Baha'i, New Civilization. Around the time when the first three Japanese became Baha'is, an American Baha'i, Charles Mason Remy, visited Japan and gave the first Baha'i talk in Japan. It was at Tokyo YMCA, and the title was The Persian Revelation of Baha'u'llah. In 1908, Abdu'l-Bahá was freed from the long imprisonment and later embarked on journeys to the West in order to promulgate his father's faith. During the trips, he would meet some Japanese leaders and educators. One of them was a founder of Japan's first women's college, Naruse Jinzo. The meeting took place in March 1912 in London. Abdu'l-Bahá wrote a prayer for Japan, which is still in the archives of Japan Women's University. During his trip through Europe in 1912, Abdu'l-Bahá met Ambassador Arakawa in London. In his discussion with the Ambassador, 
he stressed three points that were important for Japan's development. Religion must not get mixed up with politics. Women must be educated equally with men. Spiritual development must keep pace with material development. If it did not, he foretold the example that there is a power in the earth that if discovered before mankind was spiritually mature, was capable of causing great damage to the atmosphere. This is the only recorded instance of Abdul Baha mentioning this prophecy, and it is interesting that Japan has experienced both damage from the military as well as so-called peaceful use of nuclear energy. On October 7, 1912, Abdu'l-Bahá gave a talk to a Japanese audience in Oakland, California. In this talk, Abdu'l-Bahá extolled the remarkable material progress Japan had made in a short period of time, asserted that Japan must also possess an equally great spiritual capacity, categorically stated that the Son of Truth had once again risen in the person of Baha'u'llah, rejoiced that he had found people with no prejudice in terms of search for truth, and finally implored divine assistance for Japanese people's service to unite and serve humankind. Moreover, the guardian, Shoghi Effendi, wrote that Abdu'l-Bahá often spoke of Japan and its spiritual destiny and quotes the following prophetic words by the Master. Japan will turn ablaze. Japan is endowed with a most remarkable capacity for the spread of the cause of God. Japan, with another country, will take the lead in the spiritual reawakening of the peoples and nations that the world shall soon witness. Taisho Emperor Yoshihito was enthroned. The Taisho era is often described as an age of democratization and liberalization with the expression Taisho democracy. Movements in this period included universal suffrage, freedom of speech and assembly, equality of women and men, and emancipation of Burakumin. Japan joined the League of Nations and became a member of the Permanent Security Council. Nitobe Inazo was Deputy Director General of the League, accelerating Japan's internationalization. Such was the time when the first pioneers came and settled in Japan in accordance with Abdul Baha's directions. In the Baha'i faith, professional priesthood does not exist. Instead, believers simply live the life and share the teachings with others in their daily activities. Those who move to a new location to share the faith are called pioneers. The first pioneer to Japan was Dr. George Auger, who moved to Japan in June 1914. The second pioneer to Japan was the earlier mentioned Agnes Alexander, who arrived in Japan in Kobe on November 1st, 1914. Both Dr. Auger and Miss Alexander lived among the Japanese and made conscious efforts to know the people and gradually shared the teachings with them. Thus, the very first Baha'is to embrace the faith on the Japanese soil, less than a year later in May of 1915, Mr. Kikutaro Fukuta learned about the faith through Miss Alexander and accepted the faith. On July 18, 1915, Agnes invited Martha Root to speak at a fireside in Tokyo. Miss Root was an incomparable teacher of the faith who traveled around the world for the teaching purpose. She also came to Japan several times. Teaching work in Japan was assisted by such travel teachers from overseas. The photo shows the participants of this fireside, among whom were the first Japanese Baha'i from within Japan, Mr. Fukuta, the well-known poet Akita Ujaku, and Ichigo Kamichika, who would later become one of the first women members of the Diet after the Second World War, 1952. In 1916, Mr. Tokujudo Tori, a blind man, became the second Baha'i in Japan. 
He later became president of the Association for the Blind and translated Baha'i books into Braille, by which many blind people learned about the teachings and were attracted to the faith. Miss Yuriko Mochizuki was the first woman Japanese Baha'i. She was only 16 at the time, in 1916. She later translated the hidden words into Japanese. In 1919, Aida Finch came as a pioneer and continued her work until 1923. Miss Mikae Komatsu served as her assistant. Between 1919 and 1923, Miss Alexander visited Korea and China, opening those regions to the faith. In 1922, the Japanese women Baha'is sent a hundred dolls in kimono to America. The dolls were purchased by Agnes Alexander, and they were sold in the U.S., with the proceeds donated as contributions to the Chicago Temple Fund. As mentioned earlier, Taisho was a period characterized by internationalization. Esperanto and English language studies were particularly popular. Both Agnes Alexander and Martha Root had studied Esperanto because of Abdu'l-Baha's strong recommendation. Through this tool, they were enabled to mingle and associate with the learned and young students, sharing the teachings of their beloved faith. On September 1st, 1923, the Great Kanto Earthquake hit the Kanto area. Fortunately, Agnes Alexander and Ida Finch were safe. Miss Alexander's house was the only one for blocks that was left with running water. She set up an orphanage in her home for several months. Sometime later, Finch returned to America and sent clothing and money for Agnes to share with victimized children. The Guardian and the Holy Family also sent economic aid. Miss Alexander helped translate Baha'u'llah and the New Era and the Hidden Words between 1928 and 1933. The New Era was translated by a Buddhist monk, Taiwan Inoue, while the Hidden Words was translated by Miss Mochizuki. The Showa era, 1926 to 1989, saw a rapid transition from democracy and liberalization to imperialism and militarism. Japan resigned from the League of Nations and became isolated in international society. In May 1929, seven specially bound volumes of Baha'i books, together with an accompanying note from Shoghi Effendi, were presented to the emperor through the good offices of Dr. Musujima. In 1930, Martha Root visited Japan for the third time and attempted to make an appointment for an audience with the emperor, but this was not successful. In November of the same year, through Dr. Musujima, Miss Root was able to present a Persian rug and a calligraphic arrangement in the form of a bird of passages from the Baha'i writings together with a message from Shoghi Effendi. Keith Ransom Keller stayed for six weeks in 1931 and gave talks at universities, including Japan Women's College. In 1932, the very first local spiritual assembly was elected in Tokyo, consisting of five women and four men, which Agnes Alexander described as significant of a new day in this oriental country. The assembly was elected again the following year. However, after that, it remained unelected until 1948, including the warring years. Martha Root visited Japan for the fourth time in 1937, meeting Mr. Tori and Mr. Fukuta. World War II broke out in 1939 and lasted until 1945, which made it difficult for the Baha'i community to carry on its activities. Mr. Fujita, who had been serving the faith in the Holy Land, was also obliged to return to Japan, back to his hometown of Yanai in Yamaguchi. In August 1945, atomic bombs were dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and the war came to an end in defeat. Although the war brought much devastation to the nation, Japan made a remarkable recovery and achieved a miraculous economic success. 
However, this material affluence was not necessarily accompanied by spiritual wealth, causing society to suffer from a kind of spiritual starvation. In 1947, Mr. Robert Imagiri came to Japan in response to the Guardian's recommendation as the first pioneer to Japan after the war. On April 21, 1948, the first local assembly after the war was formed in Tokyo. In 1950, Agnes Alexander returned to Japan. Although visas were difficult to obtain during the occupation by the U.S. Army, she was able to obtain a visa thanks to Lieutenant Davenport from the U.S. On March 21, 1953, the Mobiles and the Katerais arrived at Tokyo as pioneers from Iran. Later, they settled in Amagasaki, Hyogo Prefecture. In June 1953, Mr. Noridin Momtazi came to Japan from Iran as a pioneer and donated Japan's first Hazarada Kultz Baha'i Center in Amagasaki. In 1953, Mr. Yadola Rafat came as a pioneer from Iran and settled in Shinjuku, Tokyo. His residence became a focal point of most of the activities in Tokyo. It later became the Tokyo Baha'i Center. In December 1953, Barbara Sims arrived as a pioneer from America and settled in Tokyo. In 1954, Mr. Ruola Momtazi arrived in Japan as a pioneer from Iran and settled in Amagasaki. In 1954, Mr. Hiroyasu Takano left the USA after one year's study. On his way back to Japan, he visited Haifa and met the Guardian, who spoke to him about the spiritual axis, and also gave him the sacred cloth which had been used to cover the holy remains of Baha'u'llah. It is currently placed at the Tokyo Baha'i Center. On April 21, 1954, the second local spiritual assembly in Japan was elected in Hyogo Prefecture, the Hyogo Prefecture LSA. In September 1955, an Asian teaching conference was held in Nikko, hosted by the local spiritual assembly of Tokyo. Hand of the Cause of God, Mr. Kadim, was present on behalf of the Guardian. In 1956, Eight local spiritual assemblies were elected in Tokyo, Nagoya, Osaka, Kobe, Nishinomiya, Amagasaki, Kyoto, and Yokohama. Kobe, Nishinomiya, and Amagasaki were three divisions brought forth from the aforementioned Hyogo Prefecture LSA. Moreover, in 1957, Hiroshima elected its assembly, and in 1958, Itami and Akashi elected their respective assemblies. Finally, in 1959, three more localities elected their LSAs, Nagasaki, Sapporo, and Ashiya. In 1957, Agnes Alexander was appointed as a hand of the cause of God. In April 1957, the first Northeast Asia National Spiritual Assembly was elected. Its jurisdiction covered Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau. In August 1957, Japan's first Baha'i summer school was held in Takarazuka with 100 participants from 16 cities. In 1956, the year before the Northeast Asia Assembly was to be elected, the Guardian wrote about the tasks to be undertaken by that assembly, which included teaching work in Hokkaido. As a result, Mr. Nakajima and Mr. Momtazi undertook a teaching trip in Hokkaido in 1957. This was followed by a rapid spread of the faith among the Ainu friends. In November 1957, the guardian Shogi Effendi passed away. In April 1963, the Universal House of Justice was elected for the first time. In the faith, there are holy souls called the hands of the cause of God. Their function is to protect and propagate the faith, as well as to assist friends' spiritual learning. They too visited Japan and helped the believers and the community to grow. Mr. Siegfried Schopflocker was appointed to hand in the cause in 1952. 
However, 25 years prior to it, he had visited Japan as part of this round-the-world journey and met as many Baha'is as he could and wrote an article about it in the magazine Star of the West. In 1957 and 1973, Mr. Jalal Kazeh visited Japan. In 1959, Hand of the Cause of God, Mr. Shuala Alai visited Japan. In 1961, Hand of the Cause of God, Dr. Mohajar, visited Japan. He returned to Japan several times, including 1964, 65, 69, 71, and 1976. Hand of the Cause of God, Mr. Faizi, visited Japan in 1963, 67, and 69, 70. In 1966, Hand of the Cause of God, Mr. Tarazula Samandari visited Japan. In 1967, Hand of the Cause of God, Mr. Paul Haney came to Japan. In 1968, Hand of the Cause of God, Mr. John Robarts came to Japan. Hand of the Cause of God, Mr. Collis Featherstone visited Japan in 1965, 68, 71, 73, 79, and 1988. During his 1973 visit, he met Okinawa's governor and presented a copy of the Proclamation of Baha'u'llah. The photo is from 1988. Hand of the Cause of God, Mr. Ali Akbar Furutan, also visited Japan several times, including 1969, 71, 76, and 1977. The Hand of the Cause of God who visited Japan in 1970 was Mr. Inoh Olinga. Hand of the Cause of God Mr. William Sears visited Japan in 1974. In 1977, Hand of the Cause Ruhiya Khanum visited Japan for the first time. Due to an illness, however, she was forced to return within a week. On her second visit, in 1978, she stayed in Japan for 63 days. She and Miss Yuriko Furukawa were reunited after 50 years. Ruhiya Hanum spoke to the pioneers to Japan and to the Japanese believers about 19 qualities promoted by the Baha'i teachings that the Japanese already have. They include basic reverence, honesty, cleanliness, discipline, justice, consultation, community-centered thought patterns, among others. Needless to say, the hand of the cause of God who stayed longest and contributed most to the faith in Japan was Miss Agnes Alexander. During the visits and stays in Hawaii, U.S., Europe, and the Holy Land in between, she served the faith in Japan between 1914 and 1967. In 1968, Mr. Masaki Ushibata from Kyoto went to New Guinea, now Papua New Guinea, to engage in a two-month teaching trip. This was the first time a Japanese Baha'i undertook long-term travel teaching overseas. In 1975, Mr. Ushibata moved to the Eastern and Western Caroline Islands as the first international pioneer from Japan and contributed to the strengthening of the spiritual axis. The faith which had been brought to Japan some 50 years ago was now taught overseas by a Japan-born Baha'i. The photo is from the 1968 trip. On April 21, 1971, the first local spiritual assembly in Naha was elected in Okinawa. Thus far, the Baha'i community had grown thanks to the sacrificial efforts of pioneers and international travel teachers taking roots in the country. After the 1960s, domestic pioneers started to move to different parts of Japan, starting with Hokkaido in 1968, followed by Kyushu, Shikoku, and Okinawa. It was 1932 when Agnes Alexander visited Hokkaido for the first time to attend Esperanto meetings, and not until 1957 when Mr. Nakajima and Mr. Montazi went there on a teaching trip that any other Baha'is visited there. 
in September 1971, North Pacific Conference was held in Sapporo. Now that the faith was firmly rooted in Hokkaido, it was selected as one of the venues of the eight oceanic and continental conferences that were convened by the Supreme Body of the Faith. In April 1974, the first Baha'i National Convention of Japan was held and the National Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of Japan was elected for the first time. On behalf of the Universal House of Justice, the hand of the cause, Mr. Sears, was present. This was an epoch-making development in that the Japanese Baha'i community had now grown enough to have its own National Spiritual Assembly. In 1977, the Japanese translation of the Baha'u'llah's The Book of Certitude was published by the efforts of Dr. Ikuo Mizuno. Dr. Mizuno spent two years on this project, devoting each night after work at his hospital. He also served as a member of the National Spiritual Assembly and an auxiliary board member for protection, as well as gave talks and led study sessions at summer schools and other functions. In 1977 and 1987, member of the Universal House of Justice, Mr. Fateh Azam, visited Japan. In 1979, Iranian revolution took place and many Iranian Baha'is spread all over the world, including to Japan. During the five-year plan, 1974 to 1979, pioneers from Iran, the US, Canada, and other places where the faith was strong were invited to settle in Japan, to live their lives as Baha'is, and help to raise up Baha'i communities in various localities. Some of them were students, others were business people. Still more of them were educators, especially focusing on English education. As they took up life throughout Japan, they initiated and supported such activities as children's classes for moral education, youth activities, activities that promote awareness and appreciation of other cultures, equality of men and women, internationalization, peace education, environmental education, and others, social contributions through arts. They reached out in friendship wherever it was possible to promote principles that are fundamental to the betterment of mankind. In 1982, the old Tokyo Baha'i Center was demolished and a three-story building was constructed as a new Tokyo Baha'i Center. The new center was funded by part of the money acquired through the sale of the old Osaka Baha'i Center. In September 1982, 80 friends from Japan participated in an international conference in Canberra, Australia, strengthening the spiritual axis. In April 1983, the seat of the Universal House of Justice was completed. 1986 was the United Nations International Year of Peace. Baha'is of Japan actively supported peace education efforts by sharing the promise of world peace with leaders of thought. In 1990, Mrs. Munsey visited Japan and offered a series of spiritualization institutes in Nikko and other parts of Japan. In 1990, Continental Counselor Mr. Afshin gave spiritualization institutes in Japan. In December 1991, the first annual conference of the Association for the Baha'i Studies Japan was held in Tokyo. The World Congress in New York was held in November 1992. Approximately 30,000 Baha'is, including 200 from Japan, participated. In September 1992, Prince Alfred of Liechtenstein toured Japan and gave talks in various parts of Japan titled Futurology, Baha'u'llah's Vision. In 1993, member of the Universal House of Justice, Dr. Peter Kahn visited Japan. In 1993, the Kitabiak Das was published in Japanese. In 1994, the International Baha'i Peace Relay was launched with children and youth running from Hiroshima to Nagasaki in a relay format and conveying the Baha'i message of peace and unity. The annual peace relay lasted for 13 years until 2006. In 1996, the institute process was introduced to promote development of human resources at the grassroots level. 
In May 2001, dedication of the terraces on Mount Carmel was observed. 19 Baha'is from each country were selected to participate, including a contingent from Japan. Junior youth program trainer Mr. Lim visited from Malaysia to help start JYEP in Japan. In 2002, a 10-day-long West Japan Baha'i Summer School in Yamaguchi. In 2004, Baha'i Youth Workshop was formed in Japan. As part of the Peace Relay, the group traveled from Hiroshima to Nagasaki, giving dance performances and conveying spiritual and social messages. In 2007, the East Japan Summer School started to be regularly held in the Tohoku area. In 2009, a long-awaited complete edition of The Gleanings from the Writings of Baha'u'llah was released in Japanese. In April and May 2012, former member of the Universal House of Justice, Mr. Ali Nakjavani visited Japan for the first time, meeting friends and giving talks in 11 cities throughout Japan. The Japanese Baha'i community in the 21st century is characterized by the development of human resources at the grassroots level and the promotion of community growth with a cluster as a basic unit. It is also featured by the outward-looking approach which involves the general population in this process. The first step to community building is children's education, for children are the most precious treasure of the community. When children acquire spiritual virtues, well-being of society is secured. With this as the foundation, if they also acquire intellectual excellence, the result is light upon light, enabling a true civilization to blossom, where material and spiritual progress is in harmony. After children's education comes junior youth's empowerment. Junior youth are no longer children, but not exactly adults yet. They form a unique generation as they step into the realm of adulthood while retaining children's innocence and purity. They are, however, by no means a generation of rebels, nor are they the cause of social problems or a group to be shunned by society. They indeed hold the key to solving problems in society, for their ideals are high, they are equipped with a sense of justice and filled with fighting spirit and they possess the ability to take action. These powers are, however, hidden inside of them, which therefore need to be drawn out. What enables this is the Junior Youth Empowerment Program. Another essential element in community building is creating a reverent atmosphere. When members of the community share space and time to have quiet time, to commune with the higher being and to pray, their bond is strengthened. Assistance and confirmation are attracted from the unseen realm. Problems are solved and great enterprises are achieved. Finally, human resources must be raised who can assist with the process of community building, which is made possible through the institute process. The main sequence of seven courses is offered through study circles which are generally offered at individuals' homes in a warm atmosphere, while intensive courses are given at summer schools and other more formal venues. In the summer of 2013, 114 youth conferences were held through the call given by the Universal House of Justice. From Japan, 43 youth participated in the Macau Conference. The theme common to all the conferences was building a new society. Participating youth studied what society building is and what is needed for it and consulted on what they can do specifically. And they put their learning to action immediately afterwards. As a result, in Japan, the Junior Youth Empowerment Program is being implemented in various parts of the country, including Akita, Tokyo, Fukuyama, Yamaguchi, and Fukuoka. Thus, the community was started by just two pioneers from Hawaii living among the Japanese. It has taken firm roots in the Japanese soil and is now growing and spreading at the grassroots level. 
towards the completion of the next century, let us press on.